Hello and welcome to Conquest Creations. A few weekends ago, the Articon Masters Tournament happened. This is the Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game World Championship. Today, alongside with two of my most experienced tournament friends, we're going to break down the top 10 army lists from the World Championship Tournament. I'm your host, Jacob Lucas, and let's dive into this video. I'm just going to quickly interrupt to tell you about the Conquest Creation web store. This week's featured product is the Nine Spectres on foot and mounted. These guys make great alternatives for ring rates and they just look super, super cool. Now because of this video, there is a special deal. I offer these miniatures commission painted. The first three people to use the code SPECTRE100 will get $100 off the Nine Spectres commission painted. Buying these products really means a lot for Conquest Creations. It means that we can get better equipment and make videos more often. All right, let's get back to the breakdown. Uh, hi guys, I'm Josh. Uh, I am a Lord of the Rings gamer from Melbourne. Uh, I've represented Australia at the Articon Championships in 2019? 19? No, 18. 2018, sorry. Uh, and uh, I'm an all-round top bloke as far as people keep telling me and if it's anything other contrary to that they haven't told me to my face so yeah anyway, i'm a i'm a gamer i run some really tournament here in melbourne i've run clash of the titans in sydney i'm uh involved in tournaments both from a game perspective and a tournament organized perspective today i'm sean rosado uh you can find me as uh, two banner minis over on instagram oh my uh, god this guy <laughs> oh yeah i've got to plug it definitely consider myself a gamer not as not as good as old mate joshy but uh, I'd like to think I'm a bit up there. And uh, yeah, also an all-round okay bloke. Well, we're here to break down the top 10 lists from Articon. So how about we jump into that 10th place, which was achieved by Aaron. And he was playing the Assault on Helm's Deep Legendary Legion. He's got an Urukai captain with a shield who gets an extra attack and wound for that Legendary Legion bonus. He's got an Urukai with a banner six crossbows and 11 pikes. Then he's got another captain with 12 pikes, one Urukai with nothing, and then two Urukai ballistas. This is very different to an Urukai list we saw recently. All of these army lists are 600 points, by the way. Uh, not a shield in this army list. Josh, what do you think about that? No shield. Josh yeah, I know. Shield. We've, we've had this conversation before, I think. Like, I'm a yeah. big fan of Isengard shields. Uh, love, love me some D6 boys. Um, but the, like, it's 39 models in the list. It, for 600 points, 39 Urukai is intimidating. Um, it, it's a, it's a very range threat. It forces your army to come to you. And I think that's where Aaron's based this list around. Um, Aaron's really gone for that. Like, here's my battle line. You got your captains at the front to lead it, but the ballistas, you have to close the gap to get to them. And the fact that there's two of them means you have to come to him. And that's where those pikes are able to, to line up and fight where they want to fight their opponent. Um, to his credit, Aaron managed to get four wins over the course of the tournament. So well done to him. Uh, so it'd be interesting to actually know what the uh, what the armies he played were, but unfortunately that information is just not available in Tawny. Um, mm. But yeah, it looks like a pretty... All, all round good list. He, uh, he scored very highly with the victory points as well. Uh, so, yeah, I, it's an interesting list. I don't know if I would personally go for two ballista. I think one's, uh, I don't want to say cheesy enough, but uh, <laughs> certainly uh, certainly makes me think of pizza and uh, a few other hot dogs, <laughs> maybe. Uh, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting list. I... I can see where it would do very well against particularly, and you'll see this as we talk about these other lists coming up as well, a low defense armies that seem to have been very prevalent at Articon this year. Mm. Mm. Sean, your opponents put two ballistas down on the side of the table. Uh, what's your reaction? Um, close the gap as soon as fucking possible. Yep. Uh, it, it, it definitely negates my play style as a player, two ballistas. Um, I play very defensively, so immediately seeing two two ballistas and how many crossbows was that? Six crossbows. I realise how quickly I need to run up that board. Otherwise, you know, I'm just going to crumble. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's a terrifying list to look at. 39 models, as, as Josh mentioned, 39 Urukai at 600 points. 
that's shit scary. So, yeah. Couldn't yeah. agree more. I am glad I wasn't there to play against this list. Oh, no. Uh, it's not something I'd want to see. I'm kind of shocked that you can get 39 Urukai with two ballistas, uh, but I guess I've never looked at building one of these lists before. And I think it's something I want to consider now. <laughs> Shout out to that one Urukai who is running around with neither a shield or a pike <laughs> or a crossbow. Like there is, there is literally a vanilla boy in there, and I and I think that's actually amazing. That, and I yeah, hope you've got the points. The I can, I can, I can run this. <laughs> that's your your objective grabber. Yes. All right. Should we nah. jump into our next list? We've got ninth place uh, with Ryan, and he was playing Azog's Hunters. Now, there's a lot going on in this army list, so it is up on the screen as well. He's got Nazog with a smattering of Hunter Orcs, Hunter Orcs with bows and Felwags, Yazneg with a lance on a wag. Again, Hunter Orcs with bows, Hunter Orcs with a banner, Hunter Orcs and a Felwag, and Fimble with a similar warband again. Seems like all these Hunter Orcs are maxed out on bows, and each warband has a Felwag in it. And then finally, a hunter or captain. So we got Nazug, Yazneg, and Fimble. Three super cost effective heroes. Fimble, we spoke about in our last list breakdown episode about how he is just so efficient for his points cost. What do you guys think about this list? So I'm so I'm just looking at the list now. These are hunter orcs not on on Felwags, are they? They're just on foot. That is foot. correct. They're just on foot. Beautiful. So yeah, you've got 45 models. <laughs> A large percentage of them have two attacks each. That's a that's another very scary thing to look at. Um, it's it's interesting to see no Azog, but I can understand why he's not in there because he big points sink yeah. to bring Azog into into a list like this. Um, but no, I, I do find it really interesting that there's no no mounted um, hunter orcs. Um, it's, it's very different from how I've seen Hunter Orcs played, but I, I'm a big fan of it. Those two attack models, they might be a glass cannon, but hey, it's a, it's a beautiful list. Yeah, I'm a fan of the Hunter Orcs on foot because when they go on WAG, they lose their extra attack. Obviously, if you charge, you get the attack back, but if you get counter charge, you're only one attack. So I think they're more efficient on foot and you've still got those fell wags that can go around and grab objectives. Josh, what do you yeah. think? It's 45 models. Um, there's, there's, I've, I'm still trying to math out here in my head. I'm going to count it. I'm not able to actually calculate the amount of bows he's got here right now, but it's very close to their 50% bow limit. I mean, mm -hmm. this is an army that is designed to harass, move forward. Just when you think you've killed enough of them, there's still going to be plenty more, which is really, really good to see, particularly at 600 points as well. Um, Ryan managed to get four wins with this list and I think given the amount of people who were at Articon this year, it was about 80 odd players. Um, the, the dynamics and the breakdown would have seen some of these higher top tier players play each other, at least mm. at some point in the tournament, particularly that last round, which could have had a huge influence on these results. Um, but I mean, they're three tried true leaders. They've each got something different. They bring to the army. Uh Having a lance in there on an orc, I know he's only an orc, but it's still actually really devastating, particularly uh, on a charge or anything like that. With uh, yes, they, sorry, was he mounted or not? I haven't yes, he was, on a, he was on a wag. Yeah. And so, I mean, he's got woodland creature and a few other special rules that run around and everything. It's just, it, it's an all round good list. Um, again, I'm starting to see it. Uh, and that's the, this very much this play style that I say they had in the UK of those mass strengths of infantry moving towards each other in large blocks and chains. Uh, very different to what we have here in Australia. But um, I can see where this army would actually live a lot longer simply because you put your ranks of infantry, you're moving forward. They're, in, they're essentially running forward as a horde. Whereas I think um, based on the other army lists, and, and I think we'll cover this when we do our bit of a summary at the end, is there's not very many terror list based on what you could see from the tournament so terror is not a huge thing like it is here in australia uh, a lot of the shooting armies this army probably had the most shooting and there's a there's, there's a thrandall's halls list in this list in this uh top 10 bracket and that has less bows than that isengard list that we just spoke about before and that only had six crossbows like there is a lot of things to this list that's actually quite nice and well done to ryan for finishing ninth mm. it's this is not necessarily about the list, but it is quite 
interesting, especially like speaking to a few people through like Instagram and stuff who are over in like the UK and, and America and even Canada and just how different the play styles of players are. From what I've seen, bows don't seem like a big thing over in the UK. Now, I've never been over there to play, but just from what I've heard, that's, yeah, it's, it's very different to over mm, here. Different reasons, yeah. Well, let's jump into our next list. We have eighth place from Black Mist. Not sure if you found his name, but I only have one. Mick. Yeah. Mick. M-I-K. Right. Um, and Mick. he's playing a Mordor Harad alliance. First <clears throat> warband is Suladan, the Serpent Lord, mounted on an armored horse. Very efficient cost model there. Then we've got nine Haradrim warriors with bows, eight Serpent Guard, and a Haradrim with a spear. Then we've got Gothmog on a Warg with a shield with a warband of spear and shield Moranins. And finally, we've got Shelob. So there's a lot of really efficient models in this list. Suladan, of course, provides a six-inch banner and is a hero of legend. For 115 points, a six-inch banner is phenomenal. What do you guys think about this list? It's intimidating. Um, I know never to underestimate Shelob, and I'm really glad to see a Shelob list that doesn't have Druzag in it. Um, <laughs> he managed to get five wins with this list. His victory points were down. So, um, uh, uh, like, he, he was one of only maybe five or six players who got five wins over the course of the tournament. Um, he's actually a little bit behind at least three players who did get four wins. And I think it just came down to the fact that as good as Gothmog is and those Moranans and everything, I just I can't help but see a lot of these lists that aren't even from the one list or have been a mini mix of like factions and stuff like that, where they really struggle as the points go up for uh, being able to compete with like a pure-blooded army where the army can focus on its one strength to the exclusion of all others, whereas particularly with this one, as great as Suladan is and those other things and, and, and the Gothmogs, uh, Moran and Orcs are, um, it kind of doesn't have your large pipe box or your uh, lots of raiders running around, your blow pipes you potentially take with Mahood. It, it feels like it's dropped something to try and go with this big, large rank of defence six guys in front of the Haradrim. Mm. Yeah, I think it's interesting what you were saying just then about how a a player who's got five wins can still be below a player that's got four wins. Everyone runs their tournaments differently. At my tournaments, your wins are the most important. So if you're on five wins, you're going to be ahead of everyone with four wins. But just goes to show that there's different styles to it all around the world. I can answer a little bit of that um, in that with Articon, you've got your win-loss draw points. They're the only mm. ones that you get from a game. But then you have your oath points. Yeah. Uh, so if you take an oath and you achieve your oath, then that gives you battle points towards your over, total overall score. And that can actually push you up the rankings quite significantly for ach achieving those. Um, so even if you were to get a whole bunch of minor wins and stuff like that, but if you've got players who crush it in four wins, they may have lost a few other games, their score could actually be bumped up significantly to a different level uh, as a result. Mm -hmm. And that oath is a secret objective that you choose? I'm not as familiar with that. Do you want to explain what that is? Yeah, so the oaths, I believe there's about 12 or so oaths. So essentially they range from, uh, you can secretly note down that uh, from the list you choose one to achieve each game. So you might decide that you want to have the uh, have your leader kill your opponent's leader. Now that could be really quite challenging in one game, but really hard in another. So you have to pick those and choose them to use them at the right time. Another one was uh, keep 75% of your army alive. Um, so there's a lot of different ones in there. They range from tactical to strategic to just straight up killing things and burning all your might as quickly as possible. Um, so I, I, not to discredit Mick and his list here uh, from, from what he's got, um, Shayla would have been hella intimidating, particularly for a lot of these light, lightly armoured armies that were up at this points level. But he had 36 models. He's got the third lowest model count of anybody in the top 10. Wow, that's a really, that's really it. interesting number because I would have said 36 for me at 600 points. 36 is a lot of models. Yeah, well, in this situation, he's below average. The average is actually probably 41. Wow, I think I know that goes why. to show where the meta's at. <laughs> Um, yeah. in the UK at least, because that is a ridiculously high average for 600 points. Yeah. 
Um, we'll, we'll cover it in a little bit later because I don't want to give any spoilers to some of those other armies, but we'll cover them later on. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, any, any other more comments, guys, on Mixer, uh, Suladan, Gothmog, Shelob, Party? Oh, the, I think the only comment I really have is basically what you said. It just feels like there's something missing when you're mixing the two armies together. I don't play a lot of um, uh, armies where you mix two factions, even if they're green alliance or whatnot, I tend to go for the pure. But um, yeah, something just seems to be missing where maybe you're not taking full advantage of the, the shooting from Harad or you know the mass numbers you can get with the Moran and Orcs and their high defense. Uh, I think that's really my only comment there. Sheila, scary. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Should we jump into our next army list? Seventh place from Simon. Uh, Simon is playing Isengard. His leader is Lurtz. It's a classic choice. Lurtz has nine Berserkers with him. An Orokai with a Banner, an Orokai Drummer, two Creebane, and interestingly, two Orc Warriors with Spear and Shields. Warband two is Malher with eight Orokai Marauders with bows. An Orokai Marauder is a, uh, a one or two point upgrade from Malher that gives you an eight inch movement. So on an archer, they can move four inches and still shoot. Uh, then he's got two Orc Warriors with Spear and Shield, one more Berserker, and one Orokai with a Pike. And to round out the list, he's got Shaku on a Wag with a Shield, and one more Orc Warrior with Spear and Shield. I'm going to go first in this. I really, really like this list. The Berserkers are Courage 7, so you never need to worry about running away, especially with your Isengard Army bonus. The Kree Bane have a 12-inch fly movement with four wounds, so they are perfect for running objectives and harassing enemy troops. You've got 8-inch move Urukai, and you've got Shaku, my man. I love Shaku. Every time a hero takes a strike against him that fails to wound, Shaku can do a strength 4 hit back. So he can be like a little landmine in your army where if a big hero goes to kill him, he can end up doing more damage back to that big hero. What do you guys think? Nine Berserkers. Oh, wait. No, 10 Berserkers. That's some scary stuff. It's a quarter of the army. Yeah. Stop, stop and think about that for a second. It's a quarter. Quarter of the army of the Berserkers. Army. I Originally, when looking through this list, and it was just a quick look through, I was like, oh, with the heroes he's taken, why not just run Lurtz's scouts or Uglock scouts? But then you look a little bit deeper and you see the Berserkers, you see the Cribane. Uh, even Shaku and Wagi, I definitely yeah. understand why he didn't take those lists because, yeah, having a quarter of your army being berserkers, oh baby, yeah, and yeah, those those Cribane are great objective cappers. So, yeah, no, solid all round list, in my opinion. He had the lowest model count, the top ten, <sighs> thirty one models. Thirty one is the lowest. That is insane. If I had so he to it. Simon's credit, he got four wins. So he actually he like I said earlier, he was one of those players who finished with obviously some oath, uh, oath achieved in there probably because of those cheeky crabane. Um, it's I, I can understand the reasoning behind berserkers. I think considering how many points they are and what you get for it is a contributing factor. They are Courage 7. They've got their, their, their ability to avoid dying to shooting quite easily as well. Um, I really like the Urukai Marauders all having Uruk bows. I think that's just a really good way to play this army where you're constantly moving your archers forward and then you, you almost subconsciously forget the closing speed that Marauders have and the ability to jump eight inches out at you as soon as the lines engage, just to quickly close the gap and be there for that next combat. Um, it's a nice list. Um, I don't know if I'd just leave Shaku with one Orc as a defender, but it's there. All right, let's jump into sixth place. Sixth place came out of Tom. He was playing a Harad and Umbar alliance. He's got Dalamir, the fleet master of Umbar, as his leader. He's a hero of legend. He's got six Corsair Arblesters, three Black Numenorians, and then some uh, Corsairs with shields, and then some Corsairs with spears. His next warband is a Corsair captain with a crossbow, a nice choice, uh, with another the exact same as Dalamir's um, warband, just all the numbers bumped down a bit because his warband's not as big. And then his 
Alliance from Harad is Suladar and the Serpent Lord again on Armored Horse with two Serpent Riders, two Serpent Guard, and some Haradrim Warriors with Bow and Spear. This is Suladan's second feature in the top 10. Do you guys think that Suladan's that good? Does he deserve to be in the top 10 twice? What is it, 115 points for mounted with, uh, with that banner? That was six a six inch, inch banner. banner. Effect, three attacks, I... three wounds. Yeah. No, he's. Three might. For 115 points, in... well and truly worth it. Do you want to go a cheap that? budget hero at that point limit? Like, he's good. Like, he's mm. not going to, he's obviously not going to beat up a, an Elrond or a, a, a fully decked out um, Imrahil or anything like that in a straight up fight. Mm. That being said, though, he's going to be incredibly damaging to the army. He's got some great buff abilities to his list. At this point, Slimit, he's almost a no brainer. Um, 41 models in this list, um, which is uh, pretty impressive. Uh, Tom managed to get five wins as well. So well done to, to Tom for having the uh, another hybrid list, as it were. Um, so ob- obviously the hybrids are doing well. They both managed to get five wins. So there's obviously something in that that has worked uh, quite well. Maybe it's just that uh, sort of Sullivan can't win that final sixth round of a tournament, but um, <laughs> uh, he, he seems to have done pretty well to get five out of six in the only two lists that we saw in the top 10 that had him. Yeah. And this, by the looks of it, is the only army so far anyway that has any form of terror in it with those six black Numenorians, which is... Yeah, aside from some of the have. heroes that we've seen that have terror, like Shelob, this is the only one. With oh, of troops. course, yeah, yeah, yeah Shelob, yeah, yeah. But in in terms of troops, yeah. So I, I quite like that about this list. But Dalamir with with Suladan the same army together, that's that's a pretty terrifying combo, in my and, opinion. Yeah, that means Asami has two heroes of legend. So if it breaks, you're totally fine. You've got the free pass on both of them for the first round. No, it's only on one. Only on one. Good to know. So you've got a hero of legend, which everyone is your general gets the benefit. All right. But having two of the almost cheapest heroes of legend in the game in one list. Oh, exactly. Really <laughs> get your numbers up there. Dalamir for 90 points still shocks me. I'm a big fan of Dalamir. Just he's so survivable. I hate it. Oh, and he's, <laughs> he's just that like, just when you're like, I think I can kill him. I think I can kill him. Soak bomb. Yeah. Yeah. And that. Smoke bomb does the effect of a channel transfix against yeah. whoever it hits, and it's the throwing weapon. That's pretty nice. And I mean, he can't be trapped unless he's not prone. And you can't forget Band of Kings. So he's re-rolling all wounds as well. He yeah, he's awesome. He's like the boss of the ninja assassins of Middle Earth. He's pretty cool. Yeah. We're just gonna have to start calling him Old Slippery Boy at the stage. Oh, <laughs> just, yeah. just lather himself up with oil, not to look buff or anything, but just so he, nobody can get a hand on him. Yeah. <laughs> all righty how about we jump into fifth place fifth place came from thomas playing the survivors of lake town he's got bard the bowman on horse with armor he's got sigrid and tilda bard's two daughters he's got seven lake town militia with spear seven lake town militia with shield uh and then he's got percy uh who's one of the survivors of lake town heroes with six militia with bow and then six militia with bow and spear then a Lake Town captain with a shield um, and a smattering of Lake Town militia with equipment. And then Alfred, the counselor, and then Bill Bo Baggins, master burglar. There's a lot of models in this army and my, a lot of troops in this army. question is, can, is uh, Bomber Green ally with Lake Town militia? No, he's only with the army of Lake Town. The army of Lake Town. All right, cool. Because I think that would probably have been my only point is Get rid of get rid of Bilbo and chuck in Bomber mm. just so you can keep feeding Alfred, who can then continue to feed. What, what are you other talking heroes. about? Bil- Bilbo is amazing. Like he's he got is, the no, ring. I'm not saying he's he's not got amazing. the ring, but he doesn't suffer. I almost got flip the verb then. He's got the <laughs> ring, but he doesn't um, have the negative effects of having to roll for the will of Sauron. Mm. Yeah, no, for a hundred percent. You're like you're spot on there. Obviously, like you can walk Bilbo into those big heroes and say, ah. Uh, you basically mean nothing. But I do just love seeing Bomber with uh, yeah. with Alfred, who can just like, here, just keep giving might out to people. So just uh, in case someone's lost and has no idea what we're talking about, 
Alfred has a special rule where he has three will points and he can turn those will points into might points for other heroes. And Bomber has an ability where he can regenerate someone's will points. So if you have Bomber and Alfred, Bomber gives Alfred will, will gives another, Alf sorry, Alfred gives another hero might. Whereas Bilbo with the ring, any model that he's fighting against, if he has that ring on, uh, has their half value, has their, has their fight value halved, not their half value fighted. So it's an <clears throat> very, very tricky. And of course we have Bard who's 155 points in this army list. He's a 12 inch banner. Just think about that. 12 inch banner. 12 that inch banner. Insane. Stand fast. Yep. Yeah. Hero legend. It didn't give him his great bow. Ooh. He has it by default now. Oh, he does? All right, sick. Yeah. Cool. Strength for rapid fire bow. Mm. Now, Love that this, thing. this list also has piece of all gear. this just to put this in comparison though. This list had 41 models in it as well. So it's got five, six, seven named heroes in it for the same as that Umbar and Harad list. It got it was another one of those lists that got four wins that made it into the top five. Mm. So I think it's it's a testament to how good and competitive that list is. Um, particularly because you do have the numbers and the army bonus. And that army bonus obviously is the reason he's not taking Bomber or anybody else to abuse the, uh, <laughs> the will points on Elf. Uh, and that's simply because you don't want to lose that banner bonus because as soon as yeah. that, that drops, your, your army's lost its mm -hmm. one ace in the hole. But um, yeah. yeah, it's a nice, strong list. Lots of shooting, which has been really good. Again... We're seeing a trend over the course of these army lists where it's a lot of defense five, defense four lists. Mm. A lot of things are going to be wounding shooting wise on a five or a six, and even in combats and fives uh, instead of the normal sixes that you probably see when you go to having just been to Perth for a tournament a few months ago, uh, where defense eight was across the board on so many armies of defense six, where it was so hard to have to get a kill because you were just relying on rolling a sixes they were much smaller armies. This is the other side where you've got these big groups of, of infantry and it's sheer weight of numbers where inevitably you would roll a six against outnumbering your opponent is just the weight of dice. Whereas with these lists, it's a lot more even. The, the shooting's there, the combat's there. They've just got to get to, get to one mm. another. Now, I've got a lot of thoughts about Sigrid and Tilda, Sigrid and Tilda, but I'm going to save them. Yep. And for those of you who don't know what lists are coming, that, that should be a pretty clear hint of, of what we might see in a little bit. Top four, baby. Let's jump into the top four. Congratulations, Thomas. Fifth is exceptional. And fourth goes to Harry, playing an Angmar army. He's got the Witch King of Angmar. He's gone with three might, 14 will, and three fate. A horse and the crown of Morgul. Bring the Witch King in at 155 points, so a cheaper version of the Witch King. And then he's got a bunch of orcs. Uh, some have shield, some have spear, one has a banner. He's got a Angmar Wag rider and a wild wag. And then in his next warband, he's got Gulavar, the terror of Arnor, with a almost identical warband to the Witch King. So orcs with spear and shield, one dead marsh spectre, and then a wag rider and a wild wag. Personally, this is not how I would choose to play Angmar. Only one Deadmar Spectre really surprises me. I definitely would have been looking at three there because they make such a big difference to the game. And this no is an assassination all, list. No bows mm -hmm. is crazy. I was going to say, Josh, question for you. Is there a bad way to write and run an Angmar list? Because I'm yet to see you a bad can, You can list. do them in very many different ways. But what I really like about this is it's got Gulliver. It's, just, it's the Bat of Doom. There's no other way. It's the Batman. Like, everybody fears it. Um, you've got the Witch King there who's able to drop his lovely black dart drain carriage. And the great thing about it is Gulliver can get, despite the 60, inch, uh, 60 millimeter base, is able to actually jump in there and hit and potentially kill a character in a single turn and then get out of there. He's um, Harry was his name. Who's yeah. done this yet? He managed to get five wins over the course of the tournament. So he's obviously done very well. Where again, I don't know what the missions were of the tournament. That can always be a, a crucial 
thing that can matter to, to how well an army plays. Um, but he's done really well for taking the Witch King with a very lower, more, um, just less will. Like a lot of people will often play the full amount of will on the Witch King just so that, oh, wait, that is the full amount of will. I'm no, full no, amount 20 for the Witch King. It is 20? Right, okay, I haven't lost the pot then. Um, like you can get in there, you can drain cage, you can black dart. Um, I like this army. Um, I still don't know if I'd be confident enough to run around with that many, that fewer heroes and that fewer might resources to use over the course mm. of the tournament. I think this is one of the lists that I'd be most interested in watching how Harry played it because looking at it, I mean, I know that Angmar's really good. I've played against it. It's really lethal, but I just can't see how this is a top tier list. And I think that just goes to show that he probably played it really, really well and knew exactly what he was doing. Um, Cause I'm not sure what he would have been doing. So props to him. Yeah. Power. All right. Should we jump into our top three now? Third place. We've got, oh no, we've got another Harry. Have I messed up? No, this is Nick. Nick. Yeah, Nick, Nicky. All right. Nicky Malins. There we Nicky go. In my graphic Malins. in the video, that will be fixed. But on my page, I've Ooh. said that Nick is... And I have to make an apology because as you're about to announce the army list, it's actually the lowest list that is here. And, and I have stupidly written 39 instead of 29. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good to know. Um, let's go Our through... Our stats this. man has failed us. <laughs> We've got... Dwalin, this is Erebor reclaimed. We've got Dwalin. He's got four goat riders. We've got an Iron Hill Dwarf with banner uh, and then nine Iron Hill Dwarves with spear. Uh, one Iron Hill Dwarf with nothing. He got unlucky. And then the next warband is Gloin with two Iron Hill goat riders and then 10 Iron Hills with spear. Again, no shooting weapons here. What do you guys think I'm, about this one? I'm, I'm curious if the way that this army got played is I'm going to set up in the middle, I'm going to defend or shield with everything and let my, what is it, four attack Dwalin just munch everything else. Yeah, Dwalin is terrifying. He gets That's... four attacks. He's strength five, defense eight, fight six. He's got it all, um, but not a war goat in this list, which is kind of surprising. He's also got Burly, so he's putting out so much damage for 115 points. Pairing that with Gloin, who's only 90 points, he's also three attacks, fight six. Not quite as lethal as Dwalin, but definitely the second most lethal dwarf mm. from that army list. Low models, I think, lots of maneuverability I think with those goats. I think it's one of those lists that's designed to sit still and, as Sean has just said, park itself in the middle of the battlefield, make your opponent come to them, shield up, and then just let the heroes do all the work and, and the killing. The goat riders run around just to annoy people. And five wins to Nikki. Well done. Um, he's obviously finished third, so he's done really well with this mm. list. So I, it, I would be very, again, interested to know what the scenarios were because um, if he's managed to win, for instance, Reconnoiter or uh, another of a few missions where you got to run to the middle or anything like that, then well done because that uh, would have been a very tough slog with that fewer models playing, obviously, um, a lot more heavily populated lists that we've seen so far. Mm. Again, no shooting in this list. What's going on? There's quite a few lists that are super low on shooting. What do you guys think about that? It must just be, it must just be the UK. <laughs> They're bonkers. Yeah. Honestly, I, it's not often I see an Iron Hills army without either it be their ballista or as many crossbows as they can fit in. Give your crossbows spears and they'll basically do the same job. They're still D6, mm. which is yeah. nothing to nothing to scoff at. So yeah, it's interesting that there's no no shooting in this. Because I do quite like an army that can just park itself in the middle. It's got the shooting. And so whilst you wait for your opponent to show up, you just keep shooting away. Mm. Um but yeah, very interesting. All right, time to jump into second place. We've got Tommaso, and he's playing a Mirkwood and Survivors of Lake Town Alliance. So he's got Legolas, Prince of Mirkwood, on a horse with an elven cloak, uh, leading six Mirkwood elves with shield, five Mirkwood elves with bows and glaives. So glaives are 
spears that you can use to shield. Uh, and then just one with a glaive and one with a banner. And here's where things get interesting. We've got three almost identical warbands of a Lake Town Militia captain with Lake, just a Lake Town Militia horde. One of the warbands has 12 bows, and then the other warbands just have Lake Town Militia with no equipment and Lake Town Militia with spears. So this is a whopping 51 models for second place in the World Championship. Who wants to start on this one? Sean, thanks for volunteering. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> 51 models. Jesus Christ, at 600. I think that's, I'm still trying to get over that, still trying to figure that mm. shit out. Um, I don't know what to say, really. <laughs> yeah, look, I think it's a really, really interesting list. Your biggest hero is Legolas, which is fine, but it means that if you're coming up against other big, big heroes... Legolas isn't going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with another big hero, and those Lake Town Militia captains certainly aren't. Mm. But you've got a bucket of might with that many captains. You've got a decent amount of bows. Um, again, not how I would have built this list. I would have personally gone for all glaives on those elves so that their fight five could support my Lake Town Militia. One of the decisions the, um, that I... Yeah, sorry, Josh, you go. Sorry, I was going to say, it's actually really interesting because like, the special rule for... like. Lake Town militia is that if they're within three inches of a hero in combat, they don't have to take courage checks to mm. being broken. So this army, in theory, can actually survive for a very long time <laughs> as long as those captains are just standing at that going, okay, I'm charging. Now everybody has to fight. And just yeah. Like, oh, cool. like <laughs> Tom won four of his games out of six. So again, he must have scored really well with those uh, oath the wards and stuff like that. And I think Legolas probably was the contributing factor there. Mm. Um, just with his ability to shoot targets and to obviously on a horse as well, you're getting the maximum move maneuverability out of him as well. Should we jump into our final army list? Final yeah, let's go for it. Good. All right. Well, the man himself, the winner of Articon, our rules writer, Jay Clare. Playing the army of Lake Town, he's got Bard the Bowman with a horse and armor, Sigrid and Tilda, and 13 Lake Town Guard with bows. Then he's got the Master of Lake Town with some Lake Town Guard and Lake Town Guard with spear. He's got Alfred the Counselor, who we talked about earlier, Lake Town Guard, Lake Town Guard with spear, and Braga, Captain of the Guard with Lake Town Guard and some Lake Town Guard with spear. A whopping 58 models. I've got a few things to say first. I have a video, my best video ever actually, that reviews all of the army lists, talks about their play style and ranks them. And I said that Army of Lake Town was an underdog army list. I think I was probably incorrect about that given that it's just won the world championship. And next, 58 models. Sorry. Holy shit, at 600 points, that is a lot. I, I still think it's an underdog army, but it's, it's still a solid army. It's mm. still, I think it very much so comes down to who is piloting the army. Mm. I've obviously Jay, incredible player to win with Lake Town. Uh, but I've seen, um, you know, similar Lake Town armies that have just crumbled. And I think that solely came down to the fact that the player didn't really know what they were doing. Mm. So I think it is one of those armies that given the right person, given the right circumstances scenarios and so on it will obviously win you a tournament mm. also when i was looking through the list earlier i almost cried when i realized that you could get 58 models and barred at 155 <laughs> points into a 600 point list it does not make sense in my mind mm. it just does not so but you can I love put... five point lake town guard <laughs> yeah hello <laughs> to me this army doesn't look that good you're paying 155 points for bard and he's got three attacks three might three wounds three fates so he's got threes in all the right places but he's only defense five and strength four and base fight five he is paying a lot of points for the fact that in the survives of lake town he can be a big six or 12 inch banner which he's not no he's not of lake town so it seems oh, like he's a really sub optimal choice 
Paired the, that with the, Sigurd and Tilda. I want to talk about Sigurd and Tilda. I'm going to go just, through their just rules. Just quickly, first. on, yeah. on mentioning not taking a bard, I guess, are you getting at probably just taking the master, Alfred, Braga, and then just the captains filling out the rest? Well, see, the interesting thing is that if you do that, you don't have any hero with a lot of hitting power, like a heroic strike or anything, which Bard yeah. has. But for 155 points, there's a lot of heroes that hit a lot harder than than strength four with just three attacks. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about Sigurd and Tilda because maybe that's the key thing that I am yeah. missing here. They're 30 points for both of them. They're both strength two, defense two. Uh, Tilda has a fight value of one. Sigurd is a bit better with a fight value of two. They're both one attack, one wound, one will, two fate. So their two fate makes them a bit more survivable. They've got two special rules. So the first one is Bard, while he's within six inches of one of them, gets plus one fight value, takes him from fight five to fight six. So that's decent. If he's within six inches of both of them, then he gets plus one fight and he may call a heroic combat each turn for free. Pretty good. Beautiful. But there's a big caveat here. Firstly, they cost 30 points and you have to be within six inches of them. Secondly, if either Sigurd or Tilda are slain, Bard the Bowman will auto pass all coach tests. Well, that's nice. Additionally, when he moves, he must charge the model that killed his daughter. If that's not possible, Bard must move as close as possible to the model that killed his daughter. Once that model is killed, once the model that has killed his daughter is slain, Bard must move as fast as possible towards the nearest visible enemy model, the nearest visible enemy model for the rest of the game. So pretty much, and there's a little bit more to it, but that's the important stuff. If, if you kill Bard's daughter, you just need to run that model away and Bard is out of control for the rest of the game. This seems like a huge weakness. I think the, the big things that immediately come to my mind with all those rules is when you've got 58 models, you can safely have Sigrid and Tilda hide behind <laughs> three, four, five, six, seven ranks of fucking Lake Town Guard. It's six inches. That's really no stress. But if you really want to be an asshole, you throw Sigrid and Tilda, or do they both need to be killed or just one? I can't remember. Into a particular hero on, on your opponent's side. Let those that hero kill them. And then your opponent suddenly goes, oh, sick. I either need to run my hero away. So that takes out their big hero. Or they've just got to face Bard. Which, but yes, he's not super is... amazing, but that's still no, you know, that's still a task to get rid of Bard. But Bard, you, you never want to sacrifice the daughter because Bard could just do that anyway without his daughter dying. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like, you can run Bard into him, but I think what I was getting at there was it makes your opponent think, do I keep my hero here mm. or do I move him out of position into the wrong place to try and kite Bard away mm. um, or to bring Bard out into a bad position. So I think uh, it, it removes their hero. I'm going to go very left to centre now and say that um, Bard, Sigrid and Tilda in this list is a hundred and something point distraction. Mm. That is what they are there for. They are not what the army is built around. The army is built around the master of Lake Town, particularly with Alfred the Counselor in this list. Um, I'm sure we were going to cover it in a second, but I think it's the best time to talk about it now. He's got the, the special rule for the army bonus for Lake Town is the master's purse strings in that his special range of his money bags rule goes from six inches to 12 inches. For those who aren't aware, money bags is effectively spending a point of a single point of might the start of any fight phase and if he does he counts as a 12 inch banner and a 12 inch plus one fight the all fight of a sudden course. making this horde army of lake town guard go from fight three kind of useless guys to fight four with a banner which becomes hugely intimidating they all of a sudden they're now out fighting your basic warrior of Gondor. They're out they're they're out fighting the militia that we saw in the army that played it in the finals. Um, Alfred the Council is in there to give you potentially an extra three points of might on the Master of Lake Town, taking him up to five might, doing this five times Where in a game. Bomber. <laughs> 
I, again, I don't think Bomber really fits the flow of this no, army no, because no, no. you're going to lose the huge benefit there, which is that 12-inch banner. Yeah. Like a lot of people go, oh, three-inch banners, that's a fair bit of distance. Six-inch banner, okay, you're getting a lot more. But when you've got 12, 12 it's huge. Like you park yourself in the middle of the of the battlefield. You, pa- you could park yourself with this model on an objective in domination in the centre of the table and all of your militia, no matter which objective they're fighting over, are in range of him. Yeah, oh, it's beautifully done. Now, oh, it's thing beautifully thought- done. Mm. And either every single army list we see for the next 12 months is going to be either built around beating that or being it. I want to quickly talk about Braga as well. Like kind of everything in this army list is, is really worth talking about and Braga could get a bit overlooked. So he's got a special rule. He's just a normal Lake Town captain, but he's 50 points. He's got three points of might. Uh, and he's got the master's puppet special rule. So if he calls a heroic action within six inches of the master of Lake Town and the master of Lake Town still has a will point, on a four plus that heroic action is free. So this is kind of like a pseudo version of A. All the Young's special rule now a four plus means that he starts with three might if he does this with all his might he can call three heroic moves on average you'd expect to get one and a half of those and then you can get the four plus on them again so really it's turning his three might into pretty reliably five might to call heroic actions with which is really really good he does have a caveat which is Braga, Lake Town Guard, Captains and Lake Town Guard within three inches of him may not take part in heroic actions called by Bard. So it has like a negative synergy with its own army list, which I really like because obviously his other rule is so powerful. And I like that they balance that not by making him expensive in points, but by giving him an anti-synergy as well. Yeah, I love the fact that he's fight four as well. So he goes to fight five compared Mm. with that money bag rule as well. And you start to see, and I, I and I think we alluded to it earlier, that this army synergizes really, really well. Yes, he has his caveat, so does uh, Sigrid and Tilda. But they're designed to fight separate to one another. They're not, they're not designed to be fighting on the same spot. They're meant mm. to be able to keep pushing each other and, and, and keep going forward, particularly with these abilities to call these heroic actions uh, on a four plus for free for, for Braga and um, heroic being in a range of six inches of the girls for Bard, it's, it's just an interesting list. Like, I'll, you look at the list and the one thing you kind of start to question is Alfred the Counselor, Hero of Fortitude. Should he really be leading people? He doesn't strike me as the best leader. Um, who knows? Maybe it's the monobrow of power that <laughs> makes all of his, uh, his people follow him around. Um, but apart from that, I mean, he's unarmed. Like he's not bringing anything to a fight except two mm. really small fists. Um, so this army list, in a straight up fight between this list and Tom's, unfortunately, which had uh, all of those Lake Town militia, their militia captains all of a sudden they're all fight three as well. So now the basic infantry are beating his heroes mm. uh, in a straight up fight. Um, Lake Town Guard don't get access to shields, which is really disappointed. They're limited to either a sword, a bow, or a shield. A uh, shield, a bow, or a spear. But, but no still... shield. Just a spear or bow yeah. there. Yep. Yep. Fuck, um... Sword. <laughs> sword, sword, spear, bow. Oh, there we go. Sword, spear, spear. bow. <laughs> bow. Wait, bow. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, I think it's it's a huge it's a huge army at that point. I think the only thing that would potentially outnumber it is Horde, Goblin Town, or Shire. Um, but I mean, it, it's it's a lot of models. It's going to hold the objectives well. They don't play with enough terrain over there for those armies that have special rules that would limit the ability to charge to 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 sit back and not cop damage from shooting. It was really going to struggle, but. As we've seen, and I don't know if we want to take the time to now summarise mm, um, yep, a I lot of what we've seen. A good segue into summarise. Great segue. I'll, I'll get, I'm good at segues. <laughs> not so good at telling the difference between a sword and a bow, apparently. Um, All right. but These like, things are hard for some people. Yeah, they are. Like but, talking I mean, about lists and me. <laughs> but look at all of the armies that we've seen in the top ten. Uh, we've got one, two, three armies that are built around Lake Town. We've got... 
two two solid arms, which I didn't think we'd ever see uh, in the top ten at least for a while. Um, two Isengard lists. Um, it, it, it's it's so many different things have come together in these armies. Mm. They're less. They're, there's more models than what we normally used to seeing. There is less high defense. Um, I don't know if anybody really noticed it until I pointed it out now, but Gulafar is the only monster in that those top ten lists. That's true. I didn't. That's yeah, a fair point. That. Yeah, did not cross so, my mind. Very low monsters. Uh, there is uh, one spellcaster in that top ten. The Witch King. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that Angmar uh, army is the standout, different one. Yeah, standout, different one there. Uh, you've got a couple of models who have special rules where they cause terror. You've got a lot of fight three, defense four, like a lot, a lot. Mm. Um, and I think that is where it's very different. These armies are expecting to take casualties, whereas I think here in Australia, we're still very much focusing on, I want to have more for later in the game, so I don't, I'm not willing to take the damage early. And I think these armies are. Yeah, bro, I spend you... so much time painting my models. If they die early, that just sucks. <laughs> oh, man. Exactly. But I'll, I'll, I'll put this just as a, as, a, as a last little touching point for myself, and I'll let you guys talk soon, because I like to talk. Um, <laughs> the like You run that Lake Town Guard army towards your appoint, opponent. If they've got 20 guys with bows, and you play the statistics, you're going to lose five or six guys a turn. That Lake Town army has no issue with running straight at somebody with mm. that many bodies in the way of their heroes. They do not care because by the time they get to get to combat with, say, a range of the North list that might only have 14 models in it, or um, let's go a 50% bow army of uh, Harad, pure Harad, it's still going to get to combat. It's going to have the fight advantage, advantage there with the Master of Lake Town. It's going to do a lot of damage. Those armies there is a higher defense and maybe a higher fight like elves, uh, dwarves, um, army of the dead. They've got enough models there that they're not going to be too concerned about losing a few because they've got weight of numbers to get the casualties. Mm. All right, I'm going to jump in next. I've got three things to talk about here. So firstly, people might be thinking, oh, Lake Town's got three appearances in the top five. Are they overpowered? I think the answer is absolutely not. Those three Lake Town armies are all built completely different. Firstly, Lake Town Guard and Lake Town Militia are just different units. The Bard is in a completely different situation in both army lists. And the second place army list with the Horde was, I mean, it was Lake Town, obviously using Lake Town units, but you can't give these armies to a new player and expect them to perform in a tournament. You you take the best army in the world, J. Clare's winning army, you give it to a new player, and I guarantee you they will get smashed because you really need to know what you're doing. Those Lake Town armies, like Bragg is a great example of it, where if you look at just his strengths, for 50 points, he is remarkably good. It's the caveats that they bring in that balance out their points. But if you're a good player and you can negate those caveats, then you're getting so many more points of value out of those units, um, which is why I think it performs so well, because it rewards people who are good at the game. Secondly, Jay Clare is the perfect person to be the world champion. He's our rules writer. What a, I, if anyone's going to win the game, I want it to be the guy in, who's in charge of coming up with the new rules because he really shows that he knows what he's doing. I've loved all of the rules that he's put out. And thirdly, uh, man, I don't know. I might have forgotten. No, I've got it. There's no really big heroes. Like we've got Bard, who's pretty big, but he's not a big damage output hero. We've got some Suladans, but there's no big Slayer heroes like Gilgalad, Aragorn, Elendil, Bolg, or Azog. And I was definitely expecting to see at least a few of them. So just really interesting um, that they weren't as prevalent as I was expecting. That's yeah. been my TED talk. Thanks for listening. <laughs> oh, TED. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I, I don't really have too much more to say because both of you have covered it spot on, I think. It's something I touched on early, which was the clear difference in um, list building that we see over here in Australia. And and talking about Australia, like there's a big difference between the way lists are built in Perth and in Queensland and in New South Wales and in in Victoria. 
but it it is it is really interesting to look at these lists over in England and yeah to to see how they play what they do what um I guess you could say what their meta is in mm. some ways and it's definitely leaning towards that horde army low defense mm. low fight horde army armies that you know like Lake Town that can synergize with each other nicely and buff themselves up um yeah I think that's you guys have as I said really covered everything Perfect. everything else all right repeat what you guys are saying so well, thank you for watching. Thank you guys for Stop coming. Stop laughing out. at me, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> laughing with you. With you. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> and to our lovely viewers, the next round of the Conquest Champions is just one week away. You're going to see my last Alliance Army go up against Azog's Hunters, so stay tuned for that. Until next time, have a good one.